She's got her own neck. Is that a pillow? I see. Yep. Is that from a creepy, uh, a creepy store? Let's see. Does it say on here? Probably. I the, yeah, I think so. The same one that the uh, uh, Leatherface pillow, and because I have the Michael Myers. The same one like this. <laughs> yeah. That's the, yeah. Yeah. I, creepy company. Yeah. Yep. I love them. I have all their blankets of the VHS. Uh, I have the Halloween, the Creep Show, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, wow. and then I have the um, Michael Myers head pillow, like your uh, Leatherface one. Oh, and Jay, I brought my swag. Let's see. Cheese grater. <laughs> what you, oh, cheese grater, yeah. Oh, it was a special movie for that. Yes, it was. Very nice. Very nice. Now that we're all here, welcome back to another episode of Postmortem Radio. This, and you guys are in, in luck because, um, well, what's Katie showing us? That's a tattoo. Uh, <laughs> oh, the temporary there you tattoo. you go. You know, I saw somebody on Facebook, I guess, it was like, pick the one. That somebody had the temporary one, and then somebody went and got the real one. And then they put them, like, on their head next to each other, and they, had to try, they were trying to get people to guess which one was the real one and which one was the... The fake one. I was like, okay, whatever. I don't think it was that good a movie to tattoo it on my body, but Me, this that's, coming from that's, the horse aficionado. I don't know. That's a that's a very permanent game for a temporary uh, instance in time. I mean, I don't. That's a lot to do, but I don't have any tattoos, so I don't know. I mean, whatever you do, as long as you don't hurt anybody, good for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, everybody, you guys are in luck because we just had to do this one. Um, this is you guys are going to get a double dose of postmortem tonight because we're covering not one but two movies in one episode. Uh, we just uh, we thought about doing one singles, but we, we were like, you know what, we gotta uh, we gotta do these together. So the first one, as you can see, we're going to be talking about Evil Dead Rise. Um, been out for a little bit been pretty uh you know successful uh both the box office and uh i keep seeing everything like rotten tomatoes is like it's like 98 percent fresh and all this stuff so you know I, I was never really a big evil dead fan so when everybody was kind of giving it you know all this talk i was like and, and when i saw the trailer i thought man the trailer looks it looked pretty creepy and look you know so i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna probably have to give this one a, a a try and especially i wish they had kept the cheese grater thing out of the trailer once again you know one of your you know your your marquee moments in the movie and you you, you blow it <laughs> a little early you know in the trailer um but uh i i went to see it i've seen it uh with uh brandon and uh like I said, I got. I got to say, I really enjoyed this one. This this was probably my favorite of the Evil Dead, and I know that's probably sacrilegious. Everybody saying how much they love Bruce Campbell and all the comedy and everything, but this one I kind of appreciated and enjoyed the fact that there wasn't as much comedy in this one as the slapstick uh, Bruce Campbell stuff, um, and it wasn't as cheesy as uh, you know. It, it had its moments, but. Um, I don't know. I thought it was a wild ride, and I, I thought it was. It, it had its head, you know, head scratching moments where I was like, "What the hell's going on? Why would that be there? And why would they be, you know, do this?" Um, but overall, I thought it was. A, I thought it was a good, good time. Um, effects were good. Acting was good. Um, didn't really have a whole lot to complain about. Um, on my end, um, you want to you want to kick us off, Katie, and give us our, uh, you know, give us our in our little package and the whole package of the film. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Evil Dead brought to you by Warner Brothers. So, kids, the fact that this is even in theaters and out at all is a miracle, because when I saw that up, I was like, well, hot damn. I was I didn't expect this, considering all the hubbub that happened uh, last fall. Uh, written and directed by Lee Cronin, 
and starring Lily Suther Sullivan, Alyssa Sutherland, and Morgan Davies. It is the story of uh, two sisters, one who is a guitar tech that goes around the country, you know, with bands and all that stuff. She comes home because she finds out that she's pregnant and wants to talk to her older sister. Uh, her older sister, however, is having some issue issues of her own with her family, which the younger sister has kind of been uh, very sisterly like in the, you know, passive aggressive, like I've got my own thing. i am got a lot of stuff going on and sorry, I didn't hear you leave me messages that your husband left you. Whoops. But I got some stuff going on. So help me out. Now, I want to tell you before that, uh, the movie opens with a typical Evil Dead, you know, the camera going through the woods, all that stuff. I love that they had that little nod to the originals and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to say this movie, I was hooked once you had the title card go, go up. I want that poster. If you were talking about tattoos, if someone got a tattoo of that on their back, mwah, I thought that was gorgeous. Um, I love the cinematography. I loved the practical effects. I loved the uh, um, CGI. I thought the acting was fantastic. I liked the nods to classic horror films, but I thought they were done in a way that this is obviously someone who loves horror movies. It wasn't something that it's like, you know, I'm going to throw this in there and people are going to know it's this film. It's like maybe or maybe it was just like, you know what, I'm going to do this as a little like tip of my hat. Thank you, masters um, before me for allowing me to like love horror and make this my genre. Like um, the thing, the entity, obviously um, some of the original Evil Deads um, and the Shining that I can name off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. uh is this a perfect film i would say no there are Absolutely number not. yeah <laughs> i mean there are a few uh there are few um instances where uh there's records playing that have certain dates and they cut the dates go out of order so there's continuity issues so, um sort of that don't make sense uh obviously you have teenagers that you know, screw up everything. Sorry for people who have kids, but usually they do in horror films. Mm -hmm. um, and it was one of those things that it's like when um, the older sister played by Alyssa, Alyssa Sutherland, who is again, amazing, oh, she, she did. beautiful oh. casting. Mm -hmm. I, she's been in many things before, but this has just like cemented her life as um, for me as a horror queen. I just thought she was absolutely incredible with every delivery that she had she has three kids they go get pizza there's an earthquake in the basement um there's a hole the oldest child goes down basically everything that you can do that would scream do not go in this do not take this this is wrong what does a teenager do who knows we could sell it blah blah it's like okay whatever kid that's fine um, there's a couple things like that. And then there's a thing at the end that I'm going to bring up, um, that happens where they book in the beginning and the end of the film that I was like, mm -hmm. mm, this doesn't make much sense either. However, that didn't matter to me. Honestly, that didn't matter. I mean, because honestly it was Alyssa S Sutherland's performance. That I thought was fantastic. And I have to give credit to the actress that played her youngest child, you know, uh, oh, especially in horror. I don't nest it's, that's a hard, it's a hard thing to do. I thought she did a great job. I don't think um, it's, I know what you were saying with the humor that maybe wasn't in as much as the evil deads, but the fact is I read an interview where Sam Raimi said it was either Sam Raimi or Bruce Campbell that that humor wasn't intentional. Like they made this as a serious horror film and they didn't have enough money or something so that a lot of those scenes end up being funny, not because they meant it to happen, just because that's what ended up happening. So um, mm -hmm. when people are trying to be like, oh, it needs to go back to this. I'm like, I like this as its own film. I think it definitely has, again, you know, it is the evil dead with the book of the dead and all that stuff, but I think it's a standalone film. And I also could possibly see a sequel 
with the survivors of this one and the survivor in the 2013 Evil Dead. I believe it's 2013, 2010. Um, to see if they could like bond together with that, you know, women unite kind of thing. But yeah, I thought this was um, pretty good. I do think that the, this little guy, majorly overhyped. Um, That's what gonna, I was going to say. Yeah. If I'm going to do some, say something that really, look, if you're going to do this, fine. I think it would have been great, but you need to make sure that a significant amount of flesh is off yeah. that um portion that's, that's coming off that was I my big that. thing that it was definitely uh did not live up to the hype because no. i was expecting after hearing and and nobody told me spoilers but i mean you just know seeing the trailer and hearing about oh man the, the cheese grater you're i was expecting to see the chicks half of her half of her calf come off of her her leg not just a couple of look, looks like a cat scratched her yeah it like. i mean it's like I mean, yeah does it look like it hurt freak. Oh, hell yeah, it hurt. It definitely hurt. Did it look like it was like debilitating? I mean, I'm sure it's, I, you know, during bikini season, it's not going to, she's probably going to be wearing maxi dresses from now on. But I mean, yeah, she's got a scar, but I didn't think that this was going to be like, oh, that's it. Okay. Uh, But look, I saw this in a crowd at Panic Fest. This is a film that you see in a theater. The crowd, I definitely agree. Three times. Loved it. The crowd went nuts every time. Um, I say go see it, even with its faults. And I'll go over what the major fault was for me after we talk to Jay. Well, right. uh, okay. And um, over to. <laughs> well, I'll start it this way. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed Evil Dead Rise. Um, I agree with you. It's not a perfect film by any stretch of the imagination, but it is definitely a very fun film. And seeing it, you know, same experience as Katie, not with The Evil Dead Rise, but with other films, um, to be able to see it with the crowd, I think, is is crucial because there are some moments that definitely capture that crowd. And I think that is so important for this. And I think, you know, it's really important. You see this with a lot more of the top tier film festivals. Um, that you go ahead and you have these major studio releases being released out to uh, these film festivals because they want to be able to gauge the reaction. They want to be able to gauge what it is there. And I'll be honest, um, the I want to say it's 2013. I believe it. I believe that's what it is, Katie. Uh-huh. Uh, Evil Dead, I was not as much of a fan of it. I didn't like I the aspect I didn't like of it addiction. At all. Yeah, I didn't like yeah. the f- fact that you're using you know, mental illness and stuff as, as a ploy, why they're there. It's an intervention and this happens. I think it's pretty fresh what they're able to do. I think, you know, honestly, it's a cash grab, to be honest with you. You know, sorry, Evil Dead fans, but it's a cash grab that Raimi and Campbell are doing to kind of reboot what Evil Dead is. Um, I myself, like Oz, have never been the biggest fan of Evil Dead. Um, you know, I I honestly... I don't think I've ever said this anywhere else in my life, but Evil Dead 2 almost made me nauseous with all the blood that's in it. And that was a long time ago, another lifetime ago. Uh, I don't know if it would be the same now, but when I first watched it, it really was was that for me. But, you know, this is a this is a, a, a nice reboot of it, you know, different routes for the Necronomicon um, and how they are able to bring it. And I think, think it's good. However, though, to say that, you know, it's anything that's reinvented that's going to change the world. No, this film doesn't change the world. This film doesn't change the horror landscape. It doesn't do anything revolutionary. You know, the opening is really cool, but honestly, the opening is, you know, kind of expected for what the Evil Dead franchise is. One thing I do love about, and there are several things I do, is that if you look down the line of the people, the crew that was a part of this, a lot of the major crew, whether it's cinematographer, editor, go down the line, they have been involved in some sort of the Evil Dead franchise, whether it was Ash versus the Evil Dead, whether it was the, the remake or reboot, whatever you want to say in 2013, um, or they were involved originally with the, the trilogy, which I thought was really smart because you don't tend to have that. And don't get me wrong, I'm not going down every single crew position. Uh, for all these major franchises, but you don't tend to have that. 
And you obviously know Sam Raimi, this is his baby, listening sure. to interviews of the original Evil Dead franchise and the original Evil Dead film and listening to Tom Sabini talk about Sam Raimi and his partner taking him upstairs and showing this clay animation and this thing just disintegrating and melting. Yeah. And, you know, and he didn't realize at the time it was Evil Dead. And it's, right. you know, it's, it's really one of those original franchises like a phantasm, like a Hellraiser that really kind of invented its own little corner of the world within the horror universe, those deep dark corners. But I, I think the one thing I may love more than anything, and again, I really enjoyed this film. I enjoyed, you know, how the, the structure they set up. Um, I honestly, I didn't need the opening sequence where she's at the lake, spoiler alert, she's at the lake, um, you know, to, to, to kind of be the wraparound to what we're going to go through and what, you know, what obviously is going to happen after the end of the film, the conclusion of the film. I love that the sister was the guitar tech and she was on the road and she was going through all this and came back. I would have been more happy if that had been the opening, but Lee Cronin and, you know, Katie, I, I appreciate you very much because you go to film festivals and, you know, in another lifetime ago for me, you know, I was going to 20 to 25 film festivals a year and I loved the fact of, of going to them and I saw the hole in the ground and I don't know if anyone else in this is oh. has seen that that is Lee Cronin's film, The Hole mm -hmm. in the Ground. It is a tremendous, tremendous tale and it's part of that. Um, I don't want to say Celtic horror, but it's it's you know it's got a folk horror feel to it. All about a doppelganger and the mother and the child and the doppelganger trying to take over. And it is incredibly dreadful film. It's a film that you know builds that dread. It, it gives that mistrust. It's got that foundation of things that you're not sure who is what and what is going on. But it's a wonderful film. And Lee Cronin to take on the Evil Dead Rise and, and next chapter of the franchise. I loved it. I thought it was a wonderful choice for him to be the director because he is such a great storyteller and he's got a way about him. And if you look where it's filmed, it's filmed overseas. This is not yeah. a film done in the United States. It's a film done over there. So he's able to have his cinematographer, for example, be a part of it from the hole in the ground. But again, getting back to it beyond the fact of a great director casting, which you can't say for every horror film, it is wonderful to see that there's a lot of people involved in the different tentacles of no, you know, Lovecraft pun intended, um, you know, different tentacles of what this franchise has been, whether you look at the original Evil Dead franchise, Ash versus the Evil Dead, uh, the kind of reboot of Evil Dead uh, a decade, you know, five years ago, I say a decade ago, five years ago uh, with Fetty Alvarez. It's, it's just tremendous. And, you go through this film and this is really kind of a gateway film for a lot of the modern horror fans to be able to get into what is expected and what, what a lot of the pillar films of the 1980s are that are horror. Mm -hmm. And so it does a great job with that, you know, build that emotional core in there, a lot of gore, a bloodbath. And you cannot tell me that this doesn't feel like a video game. This feels very much like a video game that people are going through when they come out of that apartment and they are in the hallway and all the, and you know, all the new deadites are popping up left and right, like with daisies in the field. It is oh. really, really incredible to see how they, they create and they shoot it. So. Yeah. Br Brandon, even my, my old son, he went with me to see this one and he even said that actually it, it has a resident evil feel to it. Yeah, it really does. Uh, and, and I was like, yeah, it actually, you're, you're, you're right. It actually does. And I, and I remember the feeling of, of playing that that was like my first you know video game horror slash video game uh you know was was the original evil dead or resident evil and brandon was like a baby and he used to sit and watch me like it was a movie watch me play these video games and, and yeah it, it very much so did have that resident evil feel to it uh if we're getting the spoilers i do want to say spoiler 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 one thing I very much appreciate is there seemed like there was going to be a scene in the elevator that was going to be very reminiscent of Evil Dead, the reboot, which yeah. it didn't go there, which yeah. I'm glad you don't need it. Right. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. And I've heard that there's a scene that they cut and I think that that was it. And I was like, thank you. 
That's not something, um, it already had kind of like the entity feel about it, which then if you do the thing that, you know, that was in the original Evil Dead, it's like, it's not needed. You know, um, like again, Alyssa but- Sutherland did an amazing job with the physicality of that performance. I mean, the little makeup, I mean, she did, believe me, it's not like I'm saying she didn't have makeup on and kudos to the makeup artist that did that. But it, for what that she had on and what she was able to convey with her face, I mean, she did it such, I seriously, I praise and praise and praise her so much for this performance. Yeah, and I, but, I do too. I can't, I can't wait to, to, she's going to be at Days of the Dead in Indianapolis and I, I can't, I can't wait to, to meet her. And, and that's one thing I, I will throw out to these conventions who are starting to bring in some of the newer faces of horror. I think that's really important because you can, you can, you know, I, this might sound sacrilegious, but how many times are you going to see Tom Atkins? How many times yeah. are you going to be able to see the Freddies um, or not for uh, the Jasons and, and, you know, and the Michael Myers, it's nothing personal against the people who have put in the work. There's a ton of respect for what you've done. But some of the newer faces have to. Otherwise, horror is a cash grab, and that's the extent of horror. There is yeah. no lasting roots, which is thing. But I'm gonna. I, and Katie, I don't know if you're talking about the same thing I'm about to bring up. What was excluded? But I will say this, and again, it's a fun film. It's a great film. It's a bloody film. Evil Dead Rises doesn't stand out. There's nothing that stands out that hasn't been done before. If you're talking about the original Evil Dead with that tree rape scene, yeah, something that neat that was something that was not heard of. The fact is, and they, and I'll I'll go to Wes Craven with the Hills of the Buys. Once yeah. the mother is killed, you can't trust anything anymore because you don't know what this director is going to do. You know exactly what's going to happen. In fact, to be honest with you, beyond the fact, and this is where I start to become a naysayer, beyond the fact of of how much I've talked about. It, this film reminds me of the franchise Wreck. This is a very reminiscent of Wreck in what they are doing because whether it is the, I want to say it's the third film where they're on the boat, if I'm correct, where she's married and she has to battle through when she's battling through these people on the boat, the infected. A lot of these films just blend together. Yes, Evil Dead Rise is a good film. It is a very well done film. I love Lee Cronin. But is this film going to stand out amongst the others? No. For Deadite fans, I'll hedge my bets. At best, this is maybe the fourth or fifth film in that franchise because you are always going to love the originals. So they're always going to be somewhere in the top three. Evil Dead, um, honestly, because it's in the cabin, feels way more like an Evil Dead film than this does. And Katie, when you say it's a standalone film, I agree with you. And there are films where they are branded with the name but honestly, they might be better without the name because then they might have more of a longevity to them. And that's something that I look at with this one because one of the things I think I might have put in our, our message or might have brought up was, is it like Wreck? And if it's like Wreck, guess what then? We've seen it over and over since that franchise has been put out. So that is my naysayer moment for this film. Go see it, but I got news for you most likely you're not going to see anything that hasn't already been done. In fact, the lead actress is one of the reasons why this film stands out. I agree because her charm and performance, just like Jennifer Carpenter in the exorcism of Emily Rose and what she's able to do, it, yep. she works with a lot of stuff and just multiplies the effect of it. So I want to throw out mm-hmm. there and add kudos to the lead actress among the rest of the cast who really, really deserves it. Yeah. And thank you for mentioning Jennifer Carpenter. Cause honestly, yes. It's the physicality that is exactly who it reminded me of. I mean, yeah, I remember seeing the behind the scenes when she was preparing for that film and the different things she had to do. Because I mean, she got in some positions that yeah. it's like, that is not normal for the body to do. And Alyssa Sutherland, you know, as with just the turn of her neck and all that, it's just you know uncomfortable and all that. But yeah, I think it's a great film. I do think that um if we're um if i can say the spoiler which i thought was a major fault one i thought something that was interesting is that um and maybe this is me but it seemed like anyone who had become possessed like at least the you know uh like i'm gonna say possessed zero 
you could tell when they're it's like all bets are off when they started to vomit right little clear stuff i felt like that was their soul and like that's it's done it's like whatever was left um it's on the floor now because now it's just all evil <coughs> the major <coughs> Oh, you're not gonna cough up. Oh no, yeah, don't vomit food. on it. Okay, right. don't vomit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of that, uh, but the thing that I thought was a fault was the ending, was the postscript because it's like you have the ending where the girl and again, spoiler, spoiler, but the Jessica from the beginning of the film who you find out is sick and she ends up that she's been possessed. She, um, that actually is like 24 hours after the rest of the film has happened. So at the end of the film, Jessica, who lives in the same apartment building, which I always love it when horror films have these people who are like, we're on hard times. Like maybe because you have a 3000 square foot apartment. Maybe that's why it's like, my God, I would kill for that much space, but you're poor. Um, uh, but <laughs> it's always like that. Um, but Jessica, who lives in the same apartment, she goes down to the apartment building. Sorry. She goes down to the garage. She then becomes possessed by the same thing that has possessed, you know, the people that are characters that we love. So my fault with that was like, so hold on. The mom who gets possessed of the movie can barely walk, let alone drive how many miles to go pick up her cousin and then go drive to the campsite where it is. I'm like, so you're trying to tell me that Jessica, who just got possessed, is able to go and drive to pick up her cousin and then drive to the, I just thought that was dumb. And that was like, and it really, it's like, wait, how the hell did she do that then? Like, it's a dumb thing. And I know it's like, it's stupid. You can't, it's like, look, it's my opinion. I think it's dumb. And I actually think that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I think you could have done something else to have her be possessed and all that. And then had her cousin pick her up. But I, yeah, I thought that was just a major flaw. Along with the fact that the, um, that the records that, uh, Danny brought up one said November 1923, I believe. The other one said January 1923, which it's like, oh, okay. you know what, Katie, I'm going to jump in. I'm, I'm going to jump in because I love, I love how anal retentive you are on stuff. <laughs> I am. I do. I I love that you're very retentive and and continuity is detail. very important. Detail. Film detail. I agree with you very wholeheartedly. I, I got to be honest with you is very, very cool. Very, very cool to have the records be a part of it, guys. I love the fact that of, of how intricate it is when they when the oldest is sitting there playing the records. And I love the fact that someone actually takes the blame for it instead of being stupid. I, I love that. I do like that, yes. I like the responsibility yeah. of it. But I love, and one thing I love about the film is that it is not a happy ever after film. Horror, right. 99% is meant to be terrible things. You know you're going to watch bad things that are going to happen. The Human Centipede is a great example. The Human Centipede, the title alone, you know something terrible is going to happen. End of story. However, however, um, I love the fact that these kids get possessed. Spoiler alert. I love that most, most of them get possessed. But I love the fact that they that these kids are in peril through just about the entire thing. And they yeah. get what they have coming to them for jumping into that vault. Stupid well, at least the one, the it. one. <laughs> stupid, yeah. stupid kids. I'm sorry. I'm glad they do. And I'm glad that they do that. Oh, I forgot that. I mean, so I love that. I mean, the one sibling was like, do not go down there. Do not get this. Do not do this. It's like I said in, um, I was talking about in another one. It's like I saw it for the second time. And when I went, uh, I was after Panic Fest, I went home and the man with two brains was playing. And it reminds me, it's like I had to laugh because it's like when Dr. Hafar is like trying to talk to his wife from beyond the grave, it's like, you know, if you can give me a sign to let me know that this isn't good. She's like, no, 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 yeah. no. And he's like, 
just any sign will do, you know, <laughs> just let me know, but right. I'm just going to put your picture over here for now. It's like, that's blatantly what this film is like everything. I mean, there were, there were nails that were put into crosses around this coffin. There was so right. many things that were like, yeah, I don't think I should be here. Not to mention the flying cockroaches that were all over this thing. Then I'm like, what? How, Listen, who do you think is going to buy this? Katie, That's, Katie, oh, you're a DJ. This. You're trying to get your name out there. You'll do anything to get your name out there. You know, honest. mom could use a buck or two. It's like, ew, <laughs> what? No. Yeah, but I love seeing it with the crowd. And I mean, like you said, yep. seeing it, I mean, they had it at South by Southwest. Seeing it at Panic Fest was amazing. I mean, that crowd was went nuts when this, I mean, like, just like I did the first, I saw it actually before Panic Fest. So this is my second time. But once that title card, I mean, cheers throughout that theater. And that's, you know, it's those type of movie going experiences that you just, no matter what the movie is, like if I'm there for it, like that, I loved it. And I'll, I'll throw one other thing in there based on what you're saying, because, you know, you throw a movie like Evil Dead Rises or Evil Dead's Rise to a horror fan uh, film festival, you know, it's going to do well. So it's not oh, any yeah. foregone conclusion that it's going to be like that South by Southwest, you know, it's going to do well. So the thing, the simple fact, and this is something we've talked about over the weeks and months is, you know, is a film viable money wise. It made $90 million worldwide. Did it break $100 million? No, but it's a $12 million budget. 15, so it did exactly what, yeah. exactly. it did exactly what it was supposed to do with money. So it was able to go to fans who were more than deadites to be able to do this. Because, you know, I could tell you numerous times of going in there and watching films where, you know, it's a packed crowd at Fantastic Fest, at Fantasia, you know, South by Southwest over the years among others and people love it they're of course they're going to scream that that's you know it's common sense if they didn't scream you would worry that something was wrong with the film but it you know it went beyond the horror crowd and why it didn't clear a hundred million it did really really well for what it was supposed to two weeks yeah but i gotta be honest with you the drop off is significant always after the first week it's done well if it does better Awesome. I'm just talking it'll, about the numbers at the time we record. Yeah. It'll break a hundred million. Well, you don't I, know that though. You got multiple horror films. How do you know that? I don't know. All I, I know think is it's, it'll do another 10 before it's done. I mean, maybe. I mean, at least with my social media, it's like, I still keep people seeing. It's like, just saw Eva Dodd rise. Just saw Eva Dodd rise. So glad we could all agree on, you know, how we felt about it. Mm. Just kidding. No one agrees in horror anymore. It's so divide. Any every film in horror is divisive. It's like it's the worst. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, what? tell me it's, I'm wrong. Tell me I'm okay. wrong. No, you're not. That's I agree. Okay. It's the worst. It's the best. <laughs> one one man's uh, treasures and other man's you know trash. I guess Crap. you know. So, uh, so the biggest I, I gotta say while we're talking about this, the, the biggest thing that was a, a really a head scratcher to me, a couple of things. Okay. Um, number one, you know, I'm not sure what city it's supposed to take place in. I mean, I Los was, Angeles. That's what I, th okay. W what the hell's a wood chipper doing in the basement of that damn, uh, what you never been in an apartment with a wood chipper. Come on. I mean, he can't put it on the street. It's going to get stolen. Or someone will jump in. I mean, you know. Do you see any time. trees around anywhere in that neighborhood? Okay, now no. you're being really anal retentive. Come on. I mean, it's ridiculous. Down Calm um, down. And I guess you can just you can just start those things up, at, you know, without keys or any of that kind of stuff. But anyway. Um, but I, oh, I, it, it was kind of cool to see. But, you know, you, you knew as soon as you saw it, uh, somebody's going in that wood chipper. Um, and I don't know a whole lot of, you know, I've lived in some apartment buildings and I've known some supers. I don't know a whole lot of, that have a chainsaw in their apartment with them. Um, but I mean, I guess they had to have a chainsaw in an Evil Dead movie. I guess, they, I, if they did, it'd be sacrilege, Oz. Yeah, they, have, sacrilege. they had to find some way to have a 
chainsaw in there. Hey, listen, we all have gun toting uh, neighbors next door as well. I know we all have that as yeah. well. So, oh, obviously. Oh, no, nobody in uh, Los Angeles has guns. Hey, that was a cool scene where he walks out, you see her in the people, and bam, she gets she fired. Yeah, that, was, that, was oh, awesome. that was such a good scene. That was awesome. It was fun. Well, um, and another thing, I mean, 2023, the year of just like, like, ripping guys arms off and beating them with it it's like this is the second film in about a week where it's like and both his arms are off what hey, you know what? what people are mad about covid what can you say they need to release some stress you don't need these <laughs> <laughs> the, the last thing i'll say that was kind of a head scratcher to me was okay that the, they can't get out of the building the steps are gone and everything the scene where she's like looking out the window, screaming at the, I don't know, the bag lady or whoever it was pushing the gro- grocery cart or whatever. What you know, I, I don't know. If it were me, I'd be making some, you know, you know, bed sheet uh, ladder or something to be climbing down. I mean, I'd be, I'd be getting my ass out of that building. I wouldn't just, oh well, it's raining and it's a little far of a drop. I think we're gonna just go back in this. I mean, come on. I think it's it's isn't it aren't they on the 14th floor? It it, no, she, she lifts up the window and I mean she's yelling down, and the only reason they can't hear is because it's rain. It wasn't that far. Well, I mean, yeah, but the, on the elevator they were going up to the 14th floor or 14th or 13th, I thought. Jessica lived on maybe. the fifth. It just didn't look like it didn't look like that far to me. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think I I think I could come up with some shit. I don't know. I could get out of there somehow. Well, well that, the deadites don't saying. care about you and your escape plan, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and I say that with, with all just aside there, uh, as you know, I, I agree with you. I mean, you know, one of the things they do is they, they make this film so simplistic. You know, everything that is there is laid out. There's no challenge to the film whatsoever. This is just a bloody popcorn film, you know, and some of the things, sure. Oz, I agree with you. The wood chipper thrown in, the neighbor who's or the bag lady downstairs doing it. All the neighbors walk out and they become basically fodder. They're 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 a, you know expendable uh, characters. You know, it, it's all about just the primary family and the Necronomicon and how everything is. And they do a good they do a great representation of it for an yeah. Evil Dead film. So yeah, I like yeah, that do. at least they had neighbors that cared. I mean, honestly, no matter yeah. what major city, city you're in. That says a lot. That's really sweet. Um, but yeah, it's just too bad they all died in horrific ways. Um, but are we going to talk about our other film? We are. Oh, but, but by the way, say, yes. One, um, go, I want to say, go see Evil Dead Rise, especially for Mother's Day. Wink. But um, I think it's, isn't Mother's Day coming up this Saturday, uh, this Sunday? Uh, two, two Sundays. Two Sundays. Okay, Actually, well. Well, by the time this comes out, by the time we get it edited and it gets released, it'll be this Sunday. Wink. Oh, wink. Yeah. So go um, take your mom because, you know, mommy loves you to death. Oh, uh, look at you. You should work for Universal. And I got to say one thing, too. One of the things I wanted to say is I do really love the way this movie was shot. And I think my favorite shot in the movie, um, if you blink, you'll actually miss it. It's when the uh, it's the, in the bathtub where she's reaching down into the water and it's like the camera is like for just like a second is like under the water and you can see because it makes you i was ready for something to happen and it didn't and it was it built the tension so well but it was such a such a simple shot but that was i that was i think probably my favorite maybe my favorite shot of the entire movie and was that was that little one I'm going to throw something in also, Oz. I'm glad you brought it up. You know, again, I'll bring it up. This, a lot of this stuff was just served on the platter to the fans. This was made for Evil Dead fans first, horror fans second, and everyone else mm-hmm. third. And that's a problem I have with it, is that there is nothing to it. It is a trick that you've seen so many times that after a while, when you see an opportunity like that, you know, versus the wood chipper, which you know something, or the chainsaw, which you know something. There's not a lot of creative stuff in this film. If you're a filmmaker, or you are someone who's expecting more than just the surface level, you're not going to get it. 
So don't go into this film saying, okay, listen, I expect there's going to be dynamic shots because in the film, The Hole in the Ground, when they're underground, there's some pretty cool cinematography that they do to yeah. be able to kind of sell it. They don't do, I mean, there's some really cool shots, but everything is themed for what the evil dead is. So don't expect anything more. And I, as I agree with you, there are a few things that I would have thought would be more than just her climbing up the wall, them crowding around in the hallway. I mean, you know, we're talking about things we see in apartment complexes. I've seen enough of, of people hanging out in apartment complexes that look like the evil dead for a lifetime. So yeah. I've had those experiences living in major cities. You always go through stuff like that. You know, Katie, I'm sure you can attest where you are. You know, you, you've seen your share of it as well. I've seen my share of it as well uh, on the East Coast here. But it's, you know, I was a little disappointed that there wasn't more creativeness that came along with this film, especially being a, an Evil Dead film where you could have probably had more liberty. I'll make a bet that Raimi and Campbell were very, very, very much about the fact that they said, no, we want it like this. It's in this frame. It's in this box. We know what the fans want. We don't want to go outside there. And again, Lee Cronin is a great writer director on this. He is wonderful choice for it, but I think it was limited because of fans and creators who couldn't get it out of their own ego, get it out of their own way when it came to this. Okay, but do we, um, what's the vote? I vote go see. Yeah, Even go see right. it for sure. Go okay. see it, have fun with it. It's a great, yes. it's a great roller coaster. Now, it's a great ride. If we can transition, because I think we need to talk about Sisu. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We need to talk about Sisu. <laughs> wow. I, you know what? And people are not going to get happy when I talk about Sisu coming up, folks. But you know what? Uh, Oz, can we give them a five minute bathroom break real quick before sure. we jump into Sisu? Yep, we will be right back with Sisu after this. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Um, but yeah, look, I got a little bag of gold. Is there anything in it? Oh, that's sweet. It's chocolate gold. I hardly ever give out t-shirts anymore. I'm surprised. Well, you know what? I got to give it up to my people at Allied Global Marketing because they know that when I start talking about the movies, I like to have my visuals like this. I actually have a bunch of are posters. You, but Are you saying that they watch the show? Uh, maybe. They um, tend wow. to like the stuff because I, you know, I put it on my pages and my Instagram. I do. I do see that uh, you, we get some likes and stuff. So I do, I do yeah. appreciate it. Keep keep liking and 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 sharing and like to see some comments. We're getting yeah. Lots, we're getting some. We're getting some quiet uh, support, but uh, don't be shy. We'll give you a shout out on the episode. Let us know. I mean, hey, just be respectful, and we'll be respectful right back. Absolutely. If, not, if, you be, if you be a douche, then we'll call you out, and we'll publicly uh, call you a douche. Um, one yeah. thing that I did, I wanted to ask, and I forgot while Jay was on, real quick about Evil Dead. Bruce Campbell was listed in the cast. Brandon, according to you know, according to Google here, he's he's in the cast. But Brandon, when we saw it, he swore that he heard he thought he heard Bruce Campbell's voice on one of the records. I didn't hear it, but I was going to ask if you guys picked up and heard um, anything. If you thought you heard Bruce on any of those records when when he was playing those, I didn't notice it. I was listening because I thought I might, but I didn't hear it, but Brandon thinks he did. So I don't know. I'm going to look at the cast. Hold on. Okay. I did. I knew that they um, were executive producers 
mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I got to see both Evil Dead Rise and Sisu at uh what's it call it at I mean they're not he's not listed in the cast. Yes. See the stuff I got? Swagalicious. Well, she can retire with all that gold she got. I know exactly. Yeah. You know? Gold. See ya. Holy <laughs> holy Sisu. Holy Sisu, Batman. Yeah. We need to talk about Sisu. <laughs> we need to talk about Sisu. Right. Okay. Our, well, our bonus uh, bonus content for this episode is, yeah, we're going to talk about Sisu. And that's not his name, by the way. Uh, it's not. A lot of people are thinking, oh, that's the dude's name. Like, nah, that's not what that, that's not what it is. That's not it. But uh, yeah, I actually just saw this last night and uh, it seems like it was a couple of days ago because that's how long it is when I, uh, it seems when I'm at work all day. But uh, yeah, last night saw it. So it's fresh in my my mind. And uh, this much like uh, Evil Dead Rise, um, I just thought it was a wild, fun ride. Uh, Very gritty, uh, much different movie but very similar in some ways also um great practical effects great great uh special effects um cgi effects as well takes place in 1944 right before the end of uh you know ww2 um and uh the one thing that about this film (laughs) everybody is dirty as shit uh i mean there's not a clean guy in this film um, and, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're down for watching, uh, some, some Nazis get slaughtered, then this, this is for you with uh, a lot of good kills, a lot of things that you probably, you know, may or may not have seen on, on camera before. Um, and again, like Evil Dead Rise, there's a couple of things in here that had me head scratching my head a little bit. You gotta, you definitely have to suspend disbelief, uh, a lot in this, in this film, especially given the fact that any film where, where Rambo is one of the uh, direct influences, um, you're going to have to, you're going to have to put the reality uh, in check a little bit and just, just let the movie just entertain you. And uh, I think one of the things about this film that is unique is that Already, you're not going to have a whole lot of uh, sympathy or feel bad for any Nazis getting killed. But this film takes it, you know, up a notch beyond even that. So um, 11 takes it up to 11. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, Katie, you want to put this one on a nice little package for us? Yes, uh, my pleasure, Sisu. Yeah, let's talk about Sisu. Again, I saw this at Panic Fest. So you've got this with a festival crowd. And like I said, um, if Nazis being killed in ways that I have not even seen the human body be eviscerated, if that is your kink, then my God, you are going to be rock hard by the end of this film. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, directed by, um, uh, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Jamari uh, Hillander, who also did Rare Exports. I mentioned that because there are a number of people who are in Rare Exports that were in this film. So much so, I mean, Rare Exports was done, I believe, 10 years ago. So there's a certain someone... When I saw them, I was like, oh, I know you, look how you've grown up. Uh, but it is, as IMDb dis- um, explains it, it's like when an ex-soldier who discovers gold in the Lapland wilderness tries to take the loot into the city, Nazi soldiers led by a brutal SS officer battle him. Now, Sisu is, um, again, it is not the name of the lead character. Sisu is a Finnish term um, that- it's not a dish. No, that it's manifests itself when all hope is lost. Uh, now, the lead actor, played by Yorma Tamiya, um, who is the name in the film is um, Atami, is General Atami. This is a guy who is just living off the land. He's got his dog, he's got his horse, he has his tent, he has his fire. He's out in nothing, 
just pure wilderness. She's uh, loaded up like like probes on on Survivor. Yes, yep. he's and voted. You, he's voted everybody off the island. He's the only one. And one. you know that when um he's like um taking off his shirt and stuff, you see the scars, you see the wounds. It's like you see his life like on his skin. It's like okay, this guy has had some shit. He's had some stuff, and he's just a miner, you know, just trying to get away from everything. He finds a little bit of gold. He then goes on this, like, I'm going to freaking find that gold. Yeah. Like, a little session. more than a little bit. Well, well, well at the beginning, finds he finds a little bit. A little bit. And yeah. then he finds a whole hell of a lot. Yeah. So then he's like, all right, gets the gold, puts it in his bag, puts it on his horse, goes on its way. As I said, it's 1944. Germany knows they're losing the war. They're like trying to burn everything in their path because... What are they? They're Nazis. Nazis suck. Um, and they run into this guy. And one of the things, like, just let people be. I know before I even saw it, I said this is like a Finnish John Wick that's battling Nazis. And I think it's pretty accurate. It's like, yeah, this is a guy. This is a Finnish Baba Yaga. He um, knows how to kill people. That is like his number one talent. Like, he knows how to kill people. But he's trying to get away from that. And all he wants to do is be, you know, a gold miner with his dog and his horse. But no, somebody wants to take his stuff. Somebody wants to shoot and try and kill his animals. Well, guess what? When that happens, um, you get what you get. You get what you get. And that's kind of the um, kind of the point of the film is like you get what you get. If you give kindness forward, you're going to get it back. If you give um Dickness forward, you're going to get that back threefold. There were things like um, there's a shotgun where a guy's oh. entire head comes off, like yeah. the top of his head completely comes off. Spoiler, spoiler, spoilers. They're in a lake and someone dives in to get the um, main character, Sisu, the guy we know as Sisu, stabs him in the jugular, stabs the Nazi that's in the lake to try and kill him, stabs him in the jugular windpipe opens it up and then sucks the air out of his windpipe when they're in the that's some, lake. That's some like Navy that, SEAL shit right there. I mean, and <laughs> that is how he's surviving underwater. I remember watching it. It's like, <laughs> one, I didn't even know that was a possible thing. And maybe it's not. I don't know. But as I've been saying this year, look, I've been watching a lot of Yellowstone. And honestly, the human body is a crazy thing. I don't know. I mean, people can lose a lot of blood. People can get shot a lot of ways and still survive. You know, again, it's like I said, you know, just uh, you have to suspend the, um, the belief uh, and stuff like that. And you know what? I'm fine with it. Are there a lot of stuff that, yeah, probably doesn't make sense? Yes. Do I care? No. All I care about is that every single one of these Nazis that get in his way you, like I said, you get what you get and man, do they get it. It's like decapitations, blown to smithereens, um, again, arms blown off, uh, heads blown off, decapitations. Uh, I think some, you know, drownings. I mean, it's like you think of every single way that a human body can be killed. I think they do it. They really do. And they do it in a good way. It's like, it's got that John Wick feel to it with also um, a little bit of Tarantino. It, um, uh, it definitely Tarantino. had a Tarantino feel to it. And yeah, it definitely um, did. Especially at the end. I'm glad uh, there's a certain uh, section with a number of women that you know have been assaulted. Mm -hmm. I very much appreciate the fact that, you know what? We get it. We understand what they've been through. We don't need to see it. You don't need to tell us because it is very, very obvious from the jerk that is getting out of the truck where these women are and just the look of just complete defeatism on them. But yet Sisu, when they hear that this guy's name um, and who he is, because he's a legend. And again, like John Wick, when it's like, well, I'm going to go after him. It's like, uh, yeah, you need to stop right now. When the higher ups are saying that, but what do they do? I'm a young dummy. I'm going to do it anyway. Man, man. Guess what? Again, you get what you freaking get. And Finn for the win. I love this movie. I don't care. 
If there's certain things that don't make much sense, I love the fact that a certain animal, a spoiler, 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 they made it all the way through. And that's one of those things that, you know, you rarely see. There is one that doesn't though. And that's pretty yeah. bad. I mean, yeah. it gets it in a ooh, not very good way at all, but mm-hmm. uh, wow. Yeah. This was a fun time at the theater. I honestly want everyone to go and see this because I thought it was a great time. And if you've seen Rare Exports, then you will recognize the little kid that's in Rare Exports. He's now a grown man. He doesn't have much to say in this film, but I immediately recognized him. And that was a very cool thing. So um, I say go see this. The fight sequences, the um, practical effects, um, some of the special effects. I mean, he was doing... At some point, there was like some stunt work that almost reminded me of like Tom Cruise stuff, which is like, my God, what are you guys doing? Like have the stunt people that they get, you know, that's what they train for and are paid for. Let them do it. But yeah, I thought this was great. Go get it. I love my little swag that I got um, when I saw it at um, screening in Chicago and Panic Fest again. Thank you for screening this because this was a damn good time because this movie freaking slaps. And that's all I got to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> I was happy that the dog made it because as a, and upon a kind of a personal note for me, um, the dog in this movie looks exactly almost like my mom's uh, golden doodle, Shelby, uh, which I'll pop pick right there. Picture that's going to be an insert picture. Uh, only Shelby's a little bit bigger than that dog, but. Yeah, I was I was about to get mad if I had seen Shelby get blown up. Uh, that 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 broke my heart. Uh, that was one of the things, though, that I am going to say. Were there a lot of golden doodles in 1944? Because I feel like that's a hybrid dog that has been. Uh, I don't know that that was a golden doodle, but it sure looked like one. Um, I know. It looked I like it looked like a too. mini. Yeah, and it looks like it looked like Shelby. Um, but uh, the one thing I gotta say about the whole spoiler here, the whole horse and the landmine thing. Um, first of all, I have a hard time believing it was just going to knock dude out. Uh, because believe it or not, you know, I, I know in this movie you see a lot of dudes get blown up with mines, they get blown to pieces and stuff like that. But if you ever talk to anybody, anybody who's really been in combat, uh vietnam whatever when someone dies from being whether it's a grenade or uh some kind of mine or something like that shell uh, shock it's yeah shell seldom is it i mean yeah there's the the initial person uh will get the the bulk of the shrapnel and blow up but most of the people will die from the impact of the explosion not so much, you know, getting blown apart. So there's no way he survives the, being on that horse. He would have um, not made it. <laughs> he would not have made it. Um, but the one thing I got to say, too, in addition to all the, like you alluded to, with the scars and all the physical trauma that he'd been through, you got to also realize, too, that he he was a finished soldier prior to you know, it, earlier on in the war, he lost his family, his wife, his children, all that in the war, and then decided to become this one man killing uh, and dedicate his life to just kill. So he's got, you know, it's it's not just the physical that he went to. He's got the emotional, too. So when he was out by himself, I mean, he really didn't have much to live for, really, other than gold. You know, he decided to live for gold in his his animals and uh it's it's not like he was digging this gold up and he was trying to take it back home to his family to you know support them so i mean he had you know there's a whole another layer of trauma that went through it and and judging by some of those scars i'm i'm wondering how the hell would this guy survive what he went through it in in this time with the medical technology limitations that they had at that time so i mean because I mean, he had some, he had some pretty bad scarring. Uh, like he, his like entire torso had been cut open at one point. 
uh, almost almost looked like they did a maybe even a odd if you would if he was dead, I would have thought he had had an autopsy done on him. That I mean, that's exactly what I was thinking. If, I mean, it wasn't a why, you know, but um, that's that's my that's my big big thing there. But uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. You know, these these guys. Um, first of all, they're Nazis, so they, you know, it's hard to feel bad for them. But what they were, you know, basically taking these uh these women that they came across and you know what what they put them through and you know they they deserved uh to get it in a bad way and most of the time they did and they got it the only other guy i gotta say that can use a pickaxe as good as he is harry warden i got i gotta say i gotta put him up there and he uh he, he used that pickaxe pretty well Jay, <laughs> there he I, is. I figured it was better with the with the middle picture rather than my face is a part of it. So, <laughs> oh nonsense, you Come know. On. So, All yeah, right. I don't know what else really to say. You guys have pretty much covered everything when it comes to this film. Um, to be honest, it you know it's it's a fun film. It's a good film to see. I saw it in Dolby, which was really nice. You know, it, mm -hmm. it amplifies the sound, which is great. You know, but honestly, it feels like they, you know, and, and honestly, a, a film like this, you know, it's John Wick here in the States. It's a polished yeah. piece that does it. But even before that, it was Rambo in the 1980s. I mean, you know, that's what it was. You, I don't know if you could make a film like this in the States um, on this kind of a level. Having it made in Europe definitely helps because it opens up a lot of things. But it feels like they took a bunch of ideas and just put it together. Well, let's take Rambo meets Hobo with Shotgun meets John Wick meets <laughs> Geriatric meets retired mm -hmm. Nazi killer meets Quentin Tarantino. I mean, you know, bastards. <laughs> you know, Inglorious Bastards with it. The film itself is great. I mean, the first sequence where he is confronted by the first set of Nazis, everyone in the audience, including myself, applauded with all the kills. When that knife goes, spoiler work, when that knife goes right through the temple. It's wonderful. The one thing I'm surprised you guys didn't bring up was him saying himself on fire. I mean, that was yeah, that really was fantastic. Yes. And just ran into the water. And it's like, I told my my friend yesterday about it. He's like, he sets, I said, he sets, sets himself on fire and he runs into the water to get away from the Nazis. I mean, it's batshit crazy in, in a really theatrical way, which is, you can't say that about every film that falls in this subgenre, this John Wick Rambo subgenre of stuff. Um, you, you can't really say it, but for this one, you can because, you know, it's spaghetti western meets western film meets or meets war film meets, you know, uh, a stylish thriller. I mean, it, it's a lot of things that are just brought together and they all taste great. You know, that that's that's basically the the whole, you know feel of this film and to have rare exports which is a you know a, a hidden gem within the horror community you know it, it definitely is, is is awesome you know and it's one of those films where i'll give panic fest a lot of credit it was right place right time for them because this would definitely would have played fantastic fest this would have definitely played fantasia so it was the right place right time for panic fest to be able to play uh this film and for the people who have seen this film you know you're in for a treat. You you know what to expect, you know, when you see a guy, whether you're looking at the two poster arts behind us or the shirt that Katie's wearing, you know, there is there is no tricks to this. You know, this is like Evil Dead Rise. It's a guy who is trying to start a new life and Nazis piss him off and he kills a bunch of Nazis. There's nothing yeah. challenging to this film. It's just a bloody good time. And that's about the extent of it. Is going to win Academy Awards? No. no. But... No. What, what, okay, what Academy Award will it win? I'm well, I was gonna say, maybe, it's... maybe for uh, you know, some effects, maybe or something like that, but I mean, not well, I don't know about that. I mean, you know, no. I'm no, sorry, I, I don't know no. about that. Now, what you know, it, everything that we've seen in this has been done before, even people being yeah. on fire. I've never seen someone literally light themselves on fire to get away from someone, 
but it definitely is something that you know we've seen before. We've seen all this before. Well, not only that, and, and this is funny because I, it's funny you bring that up because I actually mentioned this uh, to to a guy at work who was asking me about the film earlier today, and I was telling him I was like the the odd thing about it was I was like you know it was you know like Rambo on steroids giving himself stitches, but you know to he they they take it like Katie said to you know dial it up to 11 by pouring gasoline into an open wound and i'm yeah. like i i i mean i don't think that works um he is see-through. quite that way works. um if, you're if it was a it, bottle of whiskey maybe yeah. i could see it but that gasoline i don't think goes well inside the body i just don't i, I don't know Neither does a machete or a knife or any of it inside. Well, of I mean, it's not like he's pouring peroxide. I mean, that's what, and that's the other thing. I'm thinking. I mean, this dude's going to freaking die from infection if nothing else. Um, I mean, everybody's a grimy freaking mess, which is, I think, is is as <laughs> a part of the character and and film because it's it has that grit to it. But um, I mean, I'm sorry, standing naked in a creek and pouring water of it that is not cleaning you. That is not. I mean. I'm glad we're getting Selena retentive on stuff. I, know. Like this. I mean, I mean, if you look at history, when there when it was the the gold rush, people didn't have full spas and showers. To be honest with you, I, I mean, mean you, I, I get that, yeah. but they weren't also pouring gasoline into their open wounds. I mean, yeah. I, that to me, and I, the average age. I mean, I think the age of death was usually like fifty two. Exactly, so I mean, maybe he was pushing it anyway. Yeah, but I will say the scene where he does set himself on fire, it's not that he only set himself on fire. He makes sure that he let the Nazi see him do right. this. Then he freaking lights that. And it's like that match is a giant middle finger saying, exactly. yeah, take that. And I loved their faces. They're like, oh shit. Yeah, and then the general who's in charge like, go get him. They're like, what? No. <laughs> Fuck you. What? It's like if you and it's and one of the soldiers is like f this. It's but, like I, I'm like nope. No you know what? Spoiler, there is one thing nope. though. I I liked about this that that really from story a story perspective really because with Evil Dead Rise you know we were just talking about how it's pretty formulaic what they're doing. The Nazis who you know are. are terrible terrible characters they deserve to die for what they're doing and for what they have done the general or the colonel whatever position he was doesn't really he's expendable yeah. he was a great he was a great villain uh yes. but he was expendable he said it really well and they gave a reason he goes when we get back there they're going to kill us they're going to hang us so we are going to get that gold and we are going to retire it's 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 so simple because it's just about every single line in a different context um, in a different path of what a villain would say, someone who's robbing and it's the last heist. Well, if I go back, I'll never be able to go back to my life. So I have to do this to be able to survive. I love the fact that they actually give a cause and maybe even a little bit of a humanity to the villains instead of just making them expendable Nazis like in Dead Snow. They're zombie Nazis. You know they're going to die. You know yeah. that, you know, they actually give kind of a humanity. I mean, these guys are ballbusters. But the one thing I, I get a kick out of with this is two things. One, I love, I think, guys, you brought it up, the fact how he tosses the mines at the guys after the horse blows up. Yeah. And that horse, man, that horse in pieces was freaking gnarly, man. That was oh, gnarly. Right. But just the fact that they allow him to live every single time. <laughs> well, hold on. Let's shoot him. Let's shoot him. No, 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 no. We don't <laughs> shoot him. Don't do it. It's like, Ah! Yeah. Oh God! But it's a it's a great film and the effects are wonderful and it's a small production and God bless it for getting the release it has. And it's ninety minutes, so it's like it gets it done exactly. in a short time. Yeah. At, and you can also say the same thing about Evil Dead Rise. It's like exactly it's smart hour and a half. Keep it compact. Keep it going. Not a lot of monologues going on because I mean. The guy, uh, we'll just call him Sisu, even though that's his name. I mean, he only speaks at the end of the film. Right. So you don't hear, it's like, but he says so much with his eyes. 
and his face, and then obviously his like I'm setting myself on fire actions like mm, take that but it I'm was one of the things like I immediately <laughs> noticed the guy who plays the general their major um Axel Henny he was in the Martian he's been in a um a number of other films that I've seen and he's always like the sensitive soft spoken you know, character in the film. So to see him play this complete and total bastard, I was like, look at you. I like this twist. I was not expecting this from you, but I have to give it up to Ani Tamila, who, uh, if everyone knows, um, he played the tank driver and I believe his dad is actually um, Sisu. Um, you are much Mila, but I'll, I mean- really. Yeah, it could not be. I mean, Tamila may be a popular name in Finland. I don't know. It could be like Smith. But um, Ani Tamila was a little Ani Tamila was a little boy in Rare Exports. So wow. to see him be the tank driver, and as you know, when I was at in the theater, I reached over to my friend, I'm like, I think that's a little kid from Rare Exports. My friend was like, No, he's like, Oh yes, it is. and I'm like, Look, we're not going to talk about it now, but it's like, look. <laughs> And it's like, so oh, funny. look at you. It's like, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I think he did. I recall another film he did. I think it was Samuel L. Jackson. And then I can't remember much that he's done since then, but it's just nice to see. It's like put a name to a face and stuff like that. Or not named to it. It's like, oh, I remember you when you were this big and now you're this big. And it's like, oh, but yeah, I, again, I'll say this movie freaking slaps. Go see it. Go see it in the theater take all your friends and just cheer for go slap some fans there you go yeah Yeah. or just and cheer for a guy that all he wanted to do is just be forget about his past you know bring gold into his future be with his animals and then some nazi assholes had to get in his way so they got what they got i say go see this go see it as many times as you can so real quick I'm, i'm gonna throw some numbers out here and even though we love this film, I, I think across the board, we, we all agree that it's worth seeing just for the simple fact of the spectacle that it is. You know, God bless it because it, it, it it's getting a huge release. But honestly, it's not really doing any money. And that's that's it. People may love it, but it's not really doing any money. So, folks. And that's, you know, what, I was, I, that's what I was yeah. telling Katie at the beginning when uh, Brandon and I went to see it. And I mean, I thought I mean, we... Ten people. I barely the got there. I barely got there uh, before the movie started. Maybe five, ten, maybe eight minutes before it started, and we sat down. We were the only ones. We were the first ones to walk into the theater. Yeah. And then there was one other guy sitting in the same row as us, and and it wasn't. That was it. Three of us until the trailers started, and we were halfway through trailers before probably. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe six, six to eight more people walked in. Well, and that was it for the theater, for the whole movie. And they were all dudes. Gonna, this is my prediction with this. One, this is a terrible time for a film like this to come out. You've got a franchise film like Evil Dead Rise, even though it's kind of a, a standalone. You've got Guardians of the Galaxy coming out this Friday. Sisu came out last Friday, I think, to a limited release. And now it's going to go to bigger screens. But it's like... Well, this is a film that I feel like should have been done earlier in April or in the summertime, but whatever they decide um, or whatever happened, I think this is going to be a sleeper streaming giant. I think once people decide to see this and see it at home, whatever streaming platform, even though I am very glad I saw it in the theater and I think people should see in the theater, especially for the batshit crazy right. days that so many people die. Um, but I think this is going to be a um, sleeper streaming giant. Yeah, I'm, Oz, give me, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, Oz, but I need to say one thing. Katie, I, I disagree with a lot of what you say because for this film, I don't think at first people really thought what this film was going to be. I don't, you know, throwing labels out like the John Wick of, of the geriatrics or whatever they said about it. You know, it's it makes me kind of think, but obviously once they saw it, they knew what they were getting because they didn't just put it into a theater release. They put it into a Dolby cinema release for AMC, which means that they're really emphasizing stuff. 
And you can't, you know, the placement of it, why I think you probably could have, they put it there because they didn't think it was going to make any money and it hasn't made any money. And I'm going to, I'm going to throw a little fault on film festivals right now because I love film festivals. I love what they bring, but to be honest with you, film festival crowds are out there for this stuff. They are not the majority that are going to see this. Okay. And that's a problem with film festivals. And I've seen 95, and I, I really did a big deep dive over the pandemic about this, is the fact that 90% of the films I've seen at festivals, from the top tier all the way to the, to the low bottom, most of them end on VOD. And when this goes on VOD, I have a feeling it's going to sink and go into oblivion. The reason why, it might be a cult film, maybe, but the problem is we're in an era with John Wick and films like that. And guess what? This, it, this is not... It's not what it, we expect here in the states, and that's why it's not going to succeed. Not to not to argue not to argue with what you're saying, Jay. But I think right. part of the reason, and I'll tell you right now, and I know this because I was looking for a place to be able to see this. Right. I think distribution is a big part of the reason why it's not making money, because I mean, I I have the movie thing with Cinemark. That's where we go. There's no Cinemarks in our area. There's like six different Cinemark movie theaters. <laughs> within a 20 30 minute drive none of them are showing this movie there's a regal 15 minutes from my from my house showing first run movies not showing this film i had to find i had to go to amc down on the levee which is showing it two times a day two screenings a day one one before noon and one after in the evening and that's it i mean uh it's it's I I gotta say there's gotta be some part of the 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 answer for that is distribution. Why well, is that? Why is Cinemark not showing this film? Because it's know. a it's a Nordic film, and I just looked it up. Actually, it's playing according to IMDb right now. It's playing in six countries, including the United States. That's its worldwide release. Plus, it's a film. It played at TIFF. It played at Sitges. It played at Fright Fest in Glasgow. It played in Taiwan, France. It's played in the United States. It's played in Switzerland. Honestly, honestly, again, this is a film that kills at film festivals, but doesn't kill anywhere else. The simple fact it's doing as well as it is, I think, is an anomaly. Honestly. I don't know. Uh. All I know is I actually am a little, uh, I'm actually quite annoyed when they call it a geriatric John Wick, because I mean... No offense, but how old do they think Keanu Reeves is? I mean, this guy is maybe, I'm actually looking up. Okay, yeah, he's five years older. Than but Keanu he looks way older, though, when they make yeah, him he, as, a, as a senior citizen. Yeah, he's, they, they make I him mean, look like he he's, looks like he's 60, but it's yeah. like, I don't, it's like. He the, looks I like he's know. pushing 70. Yeah, he I does. I'll be set. I mean that. I mean, but that's no, I'm, I'm not saying so great, I'm saying. I'm saying. Oh is. no, he looks I don't like think he's pushing seven. I don't. I don't think he looks like he's pushing seven. I mean, I think he looks pretty damn good. But yeah, I feel like he is like five years. Yeah, he's older. Than he's five years older. Looks like he's five years. It's like before I even looked up the ages. Like, what is he like? Five years older than Keanu Reeves, and actually, he's exactly five years older than Keanu Reeves. Nailed it. But this um, film wouldn't work if he wasn't older. If this was. Someone in his mid forties doing this mining for gold, it would not. The simple fact that he is looks like an elder gentleman because of the beard, because of how he has to work out of his shell to, to get the rust off, because of all that stuff. Yeah, because if he because was a younger guy, they would have just yeah. shot him and executed him. Exactly, right off the, they would have. But not it just doesn't work from a story perspective. Right. right. John Wick uh, works because he has got mystery and mystique, and there's a dog and there's a vehicle. Otherwise, John Wick wouldn't work. Right. But that's the thing. I mean, this is a guy who's in the middle of the woods. Oh, it's like, oh, big deal. It's like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's I'm so stuck on so many Liam Neeson movies, which I know that he's huh. like, he which he announced he's done doing those movies now. It's right. like this anymore. Like yeah. I had a good run. I can't do this anymore. And but set of skills. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. You. It's like to see it's you know, just that thing that's like John Wick. The fact is like He's, he, you know, he's not going to give his card to this guy. He's got a little dog. That's it. Um, they come after him and all that. Same with this guy. It's like, they don't know what, um, they don't know his, they don't know him. They don't know his address. They don't know his backstory of what he's 
through just that he's a little bit older and stuff and he's got some gold. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just think it's, um, like I said, a fin for the win. I'm, I, I never heard of like a Finnish superhero. I don't know that much Finnish, uh, actually horror or anything like that, but I just, I just think it's great. I actually, I wish I, they had more money for it. I know. I do too. I, I really I wish the film would do better and yeah, I, I want people to why, go out and see it. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I want to talk about it to get people like, look, listen to us and go see it. Give it a chance. It's worth it if it's still in the theater when this comes out. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And go see it for Mother's Day. Go check it out. <laughs> Definitely see it before Father's Day. Yes. <laughs> Definitely see it before Veterans Day. There you go. There you go. <laughs> or D Day. Or D Day. Arbor Day. I'm just. And Arbor Day. Day. There Arbor was some Day. That took yeah, we it, missed. You know? We missed Earth Day. That was last week. Oh, sorry. You know, but it, honestly, you should see in the theaters because if you see it outside the theaters, unless you have a great system around you in your your home, yeah, it was. It was just really not cool. the same. No. It was really cool. Right? Well, yeah, definitely go <laughs> check it out. Leave yes. your comments. Let, let us know what you think. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, what, what other interesting ways of killing uh, Nazis do, can you come up with? Uh, leave me your comments below and we'll call them out on the next episode. And I'm going to say for the next episode, whatever that will be, I know we don't normally do superhero films. However, <laughs> uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, it comes out on Friday, May 5th. This is kind of in our realm of the horror genre, I'm going to say, without giving anything away. So I think I we will, should talk about that. It's the high I'll, evolutionary way you expect. I'll entertain it yeah. and I'll go to check it out because I did pick up, I don't know if you've seen them or not. I picked them up when we went to uh, see Evil Dead, but uh, I've got the Groot popcorn tub. Oh, cute! Where it's Groot and he's made it into a popcorn top. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I collect all those things. I've got. Like, I know you are a good man for doing that. I love but it. this. I love it. I, Katie, I I think you can agree without giving anything away that this is probably really the end of what Disney Marvel was um, before they transition in. This is really, I think, that, especially since the last four films in Phase Four have been building for every other storyline but the one in the movie i think yeah. this is that last one for it so if we talk about it it'll be interesting to bring up past well, everything's like building up to eternals isn't it okay you're way late my friend eternals have been out for quite a while yeah what am i thinking of not eternals uh, uh what do you call it uh um a, the next uh, the uh, multiverse uh, kang oh i was thinking of uh or marvels the marvels the, the, the one, Marvels is Ms. coming Marvel, be the yeah, Marvels. That's the one I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. the Marvels. But they're going yeah. in a different direction with that one when it comes to it. But you're right, though. It is built, it'll build, I'm sure, to that. That's so. what I was thinking. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for us. And uh, take care of each other. Be good human beings. Don't be Nazis. And uh, we will see you in the next one. Bye. Peace.